What if the earth was created new? Or in other words, what if there was a new earth? In a world where there are natural disasters, wars, pestilences, famines, and so on, how nice would it be to start all over again? Well, I have great news for everyone. There will be a new earth. This probably sounds completely ridiculous, but God has promised us that there will be a new earth that will be free of all the bad things that we as humans have seen for thousands of years. Where does it say there will be a new earth and why is a new earth needed? Let's check the scriptures. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Revelation 21, 1. The book of Revelation gives us an order of how things will happen at the end of time. What do I mean about the end of time? Well, this earth will come to an end because the world will reach a point of almost perpetual evil. As a result, Jesus will return for his faithful people so that they may be delivered to heaven for a millennium, which is 1,000 years. Once God's people are taken away from this world, the earth will be made desolate. You see, God loves us so much that he gave us free will. However, that free will has led to all the bad things we currently see in today's world. God gives us the freedom to do good, according to him, or do evil, according to him, as defined by the Bible. And there will be a point that if Christ doesn't come and get his people off of this earth, his faithful people would perish at the hands of evil men. Christ returns for his people because everyone in the whole world will have made a decision to be for Christ or to be against him and his people. Thus the world ends because everyone will have made their decision and there is no point for God to allow this world to continue. After spending 1,000 years in heaven, Jesus will make the earth new and his people will live on the new earth for eternity. So what will make the new earth so special? Well, with the current earth coming to an end, so will all the bad things that currently exist on it, as this was never God's intentions. We have decided as the human race to introduce evil by not following and worshiping our Creator. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now let's take a look at what this new earth will be like. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So let's unpack that a little bit. There will be a new Jerusalem God's people will be rejoicing with a joy and happiness that is completely foreign to us on this earth. We will experience a happiness that has never been seen in our generations. There will be no more death, only eternal life. We will build houses and plant vineyards and greatly enjoy the work of our hands. There will be no crime and we will be able to speak with God face to face. There will be no violence even among the animals. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Let's turn our attention to the book of Revelation and see what it has to say. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, 
and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Wow, just imagine how nice it will be to be in a state of complete peace. Incredible. Let's take a look at the new Jerusalem. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, a chalcedony, the fourth, an emerald the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, a topaz, the tenth, a chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass, and I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. 